All right, we are live. Okay. We are live. We are live. So we'll just give it a few moments. Yeah. Agree. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, hello, 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 and welcome to the Global Youth Mental Health Awareness Show, where we have an open conversations with the youth about mental health. I am your host, Katinda Dollar, author of The Big Time Back and the founder of the Confidence and Self-Esteem Academy and one of Jim Har's special board advisors. In today's show, we are so blessed to be in the presence of two amazing panelists, and our first panelist is Dr. David David. Mm -hmm. Dr. David is the Communication and Information Director at Jinha. He's also the founder, CEO at Nigeria's Book of Records Research Center, founder, CEO of Record Breakers Books, founder, CEO, Reads Campaign Africa. Hello and welcome to the show, Dr. David. Thank you very much, Katinda. I'm excited to be on the show today. I'm excited to be you too. Thank you. And our second panelist is Sanika Daraska. Yes. Sanika is a clinical psychologist at Global Youth and Mental Health Awareness. She's also a psychotherapist, life coach, and trainer. Hello and welcome to the show, Sanika. Thank you, Katerina. Now It's my pleasure the to be on the panel. It's a pleasure to meet you too. So in our conversation today, our guests will give us some insights on suicide and prevention. But before we begin, if you or someone you, you know needs help right now, call Lifeline on 131114, that is in Australia. Or if someone is in immediate danger, call 000, that's in Australia. But if you are overseas, please call the emergency contact in your country as well. So it's such a delight to be here today. And, but before we dive in deeper into the show, I would love to know how are we feeling today? Fanika. Yeah, so today we are good. We are here, we are blessed. We are sitting in front of us. But yes, along with that, we are hitting the pandemic too which is everybody's going through a troll of mental health. And when we see people around us struggling with a lot of mental health, and the today's topic that we are covering is a major topic that needs to be covered in mental health as suicide. It's not a joke, right? So let's see how does it go. We are here to help you out. Feeling nice to be blessed. Thank you, Sonika. What about Dr. David? How are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm very excited to be on the show today. Very excited. But um, the topic we are about to talk about is um, a topic that you have a mixed feeling. Yeah, we are excited because I'm excited personally because we are going to inform um, people about um, how to, you know, prevent suicide. So anything that has to do with preventing how someone should take his life is very important. I'm very, I'm very excited to be part of such a um, program. But the topic itself, suicide, is not a topic uh, that you should be very much excited talking about. But definitely it's good to talk about it because it's a way to keep people from killing themselves. It's worth talking about it, especially on a, an important show like this. So I'm feeling Thank excited you. anyway. Thank you, David. Now, before we start our conversation today, I would like us to hold the space and take a moment of silence to honor our family and friends who might be hurting, grieving, and healing from life challenges, including loss of special ones. We're sending them the gift of love and light. So what I'm going to do is just going to play one minute of some music as we reflect and just in honor of our departed special ones. Thank you. 
Yes, yes, I know. Suicide is one of those topics that is really, really, really critical because I think we don't talk enough about it. So today, we know that it, the impact of suicide in our communities is very challenging. I think people don't speak enough of it. So what should we do or what should anyone do or how can someone tell if someone is thinking about suicide? Seneca, would you like to start the conversation? Sure. The moment yeah. somebody is thinking of a suicide or somebody is got a, just got a thought of a suicide, mm. please talk to someone. I would encourage the individual, children, adult, please talk to someone immediately whom they are close to. Because that's a very sensitive topic as why does this, why does an individual think of this? Until and unless someone is not going through the worst uh, phase of their life, they are not, they don't talk, they don't express. And so because of loneliness and sadness, people go through this phase. So it's very important to talk, might be adolescents today, might be child today, or might be anybody. So talk about suicide. That's completely okay. And we are here to listen to you. Thank you. Dr. David, what would you like to add to that? What would you tell someone who is thinking about suicide? Yeah, when um, somebody is talking about committing suicide, we are privileged for you to be told about that. I think the first thing you need to do is to be careful so that your intervention will not worsen the situation. You have to be calm yourself. And then um, give the person the opportunity to talk about their feelings. Ask them about why are you considering suicide as an option? Try to understand what they are passing through, what they're thinking of, and why they are trying to consider suicide as an option. Encourage them to take treatment, to seek treatment. You know, when someone is having a suicidal talk, it's very difficult for the person to be in a very good position to make decisions. So you can assist by, you know, uh, what the person can do and how you can seek, um, you can seek help, offer, how a person can seek assistance, how you can get support. And then, for example, you can um, make research, check through um, options in which this individual can get help. Encourage the person to communicate with you. That's not the right time for you to shut the person out of communication. When this person is uh, communicating with you, you have to be sensitive about what they are telling you because your reaction as well has to be very sensitive so that the person will not shut out communication. Be respectful and um, acknowledge the person's feelings. Do not try to, you know, talk the person out of the feelings immediately. The only thing you need to do is to just encourage the person to talk. The more the person talks about it, you'll be able to know the next step to do. Don't be judgmental when they are telling you they are thinking of committing suicide. Don't, don't judge them. Don't be judgmental. Instead of that, ask leading questions like, um, what, will that, what will make you feel better? How can I help? Such questions are going to help the person to, be, to confide on you, to take you into consideration. You know? But don't promise this person that um, you will not allow others to know about it. Don't keep a secret. Don't say, I'll keep it a secret. No, that would be very dangerous. Allow the individual to know that. It is, at this point, it's good for you to get help. It's good for you to talk about it. It's good for you to get help. Offer reassurance that things are going to get better. Because when once somebody is having this thought, it's very, they will think, um, okay, there's nothing that would work. So you give the person the assurance that you can get help. Another thing is, talk about how um, the person can get better. Discuss and help as well. Um, if the person is close to you, is the person who is telling you that is having societal thought is someone that is close to you, maybe it's a loved one, maybe it's somebody that is close to you, make sure that the person does not have access, you know, um, to drugs, to use of drugs, you know, that to ease the feelings, not have access to the use of, um, you know, alcohol, because that can only worsen the situation. And try to keep the person away, away from any substance that can easily be used to commit suicide if you are close to the individual. But I think the worst thing for you to do is for you to rush to call the police. I remember a story of a family. They are not 
they are they were not familiar with the mental health uh, issues that the child, one of the members of the family was passing through. So the first thing the mother called the police. And when they came, they arrested the child. And before they get to the hospital, the child died. So don't take such rash actions. Try to bring the person closer so that the person will trust you to confide with you how he's feeling. Because it's an issue that can be helped. So when you bring the person closer and give the person opportunities to aid their feeling, you'll be able to help the person overcome the circumstances that he's feeling that. Thank you. Thank you, David, for that um, insight. So, and what are the impacts of suicide? You know, we know there's a lot of impact, but what, can you please give us some examples of the impact of suicide? So impact of suicide might be like anything, you know, the person might be going through the health issues, person might have impact on their studies, on their academics, in their interpersonal and interpersonal relationship. Not only that, but also it has an impact on the society and the environment, most probably. What if I talk to these people and what if people judge me? So chalo, not, not let's talk about suicide. So youngsters today do not come and openly talk about it. Because they might think if I'm going to talk about it, it's going to get impacted on my behavior or it's, or it's going to get impacted on my psychological well-being or emotional well-being or the state is what I have maintained. What will people like, as Dr. David said, being judgmental? That is the most important thing. So here as a psychologist, I would like to say, be a good listener and be with the person who is going through suicidal phase because that's not easy for one who is going through this particular phase. Thank you. David, what do you yes, think? Yeah. Uh, in, ad in addition to what she has said, uh, the impact of suicide can be very devastating. And um, don't forget that one single attempt of uh, suicide can increase many attempts. Let's say, for example, if an influencer or maybe a celebrity is committing suicide in society. A lot of people may be thinking um, that that is the best way out of their problems. I, I can remember a scholar who wrote a novel about suicide. Uh, you know, the protagonist uh, saw suicide as the smartest way out of the, the problem. So after a while, a lot of people, a lot of young people take to suicide. A lot of people were committing suicide because they felt that was the smartest way. Uh, but it gets to a time that government had to ban the novel. But the, you know, the understanding was getting so clear that this was what was causing a lot of people. Uh, you know, the impact was so overwhelming for the world to know that. This is the reason why most people from that part of the world were committing suicide. So the novel was banned. So the impact of suicide is just like a drop of water. When you throw a stone in water, you can see it splash and then spread. It can start little but it can cause a whole lot of damage. Yes, thank you. And is it possible to predict suicide? Might be. Okay. Yes. Um, because you know, let, let, let can, I go first. can I go first? Okay. Sure, sure, Dr. David. Sure, David. Sir. Okay. Yes. Um, at the current time, there's no uh, definite measure to predict suicide, uh, or maybe someone who is having suicide out of. There's no specific measure, definite measure. But as much as possible, the researchers have um, identified factors that can help you to identify that, like risk factors. You know, mental illness, mental disorder is one of it. You know, if someone is having depression, if someone is depressed, sometimes you may begin to believe, because the state you see, the person may think, you may believe that this person may commit suicide anytime soon. It will help you to come close to the person, even though not definitely you are not sure if this person is going to commit suicide. And sometimes people who are, you know, um, who have a substance abuse, you know, someone who has a previous suicide attempt, maybe someone who is having um, a family history of suicide, this, if we, if we are close to people like this, you know that, yes, um, it, it's clear that maybe this person may commit suicide. But it's not very, very, there's no 100% uh, assurance that someone who is having family 
history of suicide or is suffering from one mental health issues or the other is going to there are a lot of people who have bipolar who have depression even severe depression but they are still living you know there is somebody who we have we have seen drunkards who are still living they abuse drugs but they still live so it's difficult to predict but i feel the only thing we should do is that since it's not really very possible to predict but if you see someone who is exhibiting some of this threat it's good to get close try to be close to the person so that in case there is something beyond what you are thinking is happening if the person can get help through you wow thank you what about sanika what did you want to add to that yeah so what i feel is basically when someone uh, especially patients with depression patient with bipolar or substance abuse they try to give you a hint if you go for a party and if you are with them they'll try to say you come on this is something that i wanted to give you might be this is the last letter that i'm giving to somebody else so they even youngsters adults they'll try to give you like a signs that they don't want to live they don't want to talk okay so this is a very minute little thing a very uh, firm conversation when an individual is having and that's very important us as an individuals to listen to the conversation that the first person is trying to tell identifying the conversation if the person is going through suicide or if the person is feeling suicidal ideations right 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 and why do people attempt suicide is it they give up in life or they just think there's no hope or what do you think maybe they go through what do they think in their head to attempt to finish i think the the major reason why most people attempt suicide is because of low self esteem you know when someone feels worthless um he thinks he has nothing to offer and does not what life does not what living you know a sense of guilt maybe there's one particular thing the person has not been able to come you know to forgive himself about that too can make someone attempt suicide then another thing well we shouldn't forget is in ability to meet up um responsibility in the society so many people give up because they cannot meet up responsibility that is before them so people attempt suicide because they feel unloved you know a lot of people are, attempt suicide because they feel someone they are loved one there are some people that when they feel in relationship they the next um thing they will do is to commit suicide because they feel that that uh, person does not love them then mental health disorders as well something like bipolar severe depression and um different disorder mental disorder can make people can cause them to you know attempt suicide now false accusation i want to talk about false accusation because this is something that we have to watch out I remember there was a young person that was falsely accused of rape and the person trend on Twitter at the time that a lot of people were casting blame you know what is called gang dragging the whole people come together and they were dragging this person and unfortunately he wasn't committing suicide he wasn't actually um uh, the one he wasn't he wasn't he, the accusation was not right so this one was just bringing this up just to you know to gain attention of the people but it wasn't true the next time this individual committed suicide and then the next day uh the person who accused uh the individual the victim of suicide came and said oh it was it was a joke i was joking but this individual was gone so accusation as well especially gang dragging everybody you know accusing you of one thing or this a particular thing which you are sure you didn't do that they don't mean freeze the attempt person may feel worthless and cannot control it and then commit suicide so it's more like a shame and guilt because you can't face being guilty or sh- ashamed yeah. of something you didn't do so you realize there's no way yeah. out well that's true okay. so what are the most common methods of suicide can you repeat the question that put in there what are the most common methods of suicide how do people undertake okay suicide? methods um, the good. common method of suicide like eating um poison hanging yes. stabbing because these methods are very close to to people you know it is estimated that about 20% of uh, global suicide is due to you know self poisoning so most people most of this thing are caused because of um uh, you know it occurs 
because of um, you know self poisoning, taking uh, you know pesticides, and also in countries which um, firearms are legalized. It can also be a source, a very common source of, you know, uh, and the, uh, committing suicide. And there are other uh, uh, methods of committing suicide. Of course, uh, something like uh, a lot of people hang themselves. That is very common, especially in a place where we are from, um, where I'm from personally. Uh, most people do that. And um, they see it as a way they can do it and hide from people seeing them. They lock themselves, hang themselves, and then... They are gone. So that's one of the few common uh, methods of suicide that I can bring out at this time. Yes, Sanika, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would like to add some suicides, some who really doesn't go the attempts for it. They are also very silent movers, right? Like you wouldn't come to know that they're going to attempt and they suddenly go and attempt because back of their mind there are multiple thoughts like, Come on, just write a letter, leave a letter note for a parent or a uh, for a relative and just let's go and attempt. Second thing, they will be using the uh, pointed instrument tools or something that could be easily available for them. So the moment you come to know if the person is having ideation, just see to it he or she is in a very safe place. So there are various methods. Some would be harsh, some would be soft. So it depends upon the thought of the individual person, what he's going to deviate from that or exactly what is going to take it. Right. And what, what, so why do men complete, uh, so I see here, so more men commit suicide than women. Why is that? Yeah. Um, the reason why men commit suicide is that, you know, men have more ego, uh, Anything that bruises their ego makes them feel, you know, less of themselves. I'm speaking from the position of a man. And when he feels less a man, uh, he feels he cannot meet responsibilities in society. Uh, he starts feeling worthless, feeling useless. And then he feels the best way is to come suicide. And then also we have to know, unlike women, you know, women, they are, they are chatty by nature, chat you by nature. So they talk and, you know, if you, are, you, are, if you talk and then people will be able to assist. So you bring your emotions, you're able to communicate it out. Women are very good in doing that. They talk a lot so people can hear and it's easy for people to know, oh, this person is thinking of this and it's easy to get help, you know. And a man, a man, you believe, there's a way a man would talk, feel this man talks like a woman. Oh, so it's very weird to see a man do some certain things. A man won't cry in the public. If he does that in some culture, it's a taboo. You say you are not a man. So if you cry, it's like you're, you're a weakling. But does that mean that men do not have what worries them? You know, so the, the society itself does not give uh, men opportunity, you know, to, uh, you know to, to come out openly like women would do. That's why the only thing they do, most of them, they can't handle this pressure just for them to kill themselves which is very, very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Right. Sanika, what would you like to add to that? Yeah. So uh, when certain emotions are not being expressed by men, as Dr. David said, particularly true, I would abide by your answer. So, so when certain emotions are suppressed in your mind and then the men cannot express, they have some sort of ego or as attention seeking if the certain needs and wants are not met, Due to that occurrence of the loneliness, emptiness, helplessness, they tend to attempt this because they think nobody's listening to me. Nobody's talking to me, right? So due to feeling of left out or due to feeling of loneliness, men go to attempt suicide. Right. So we should, that is why we should really go and talk to anyone, anyone who is going to do this or taking the step initiative of doing this. So it's not a joke. It's not a playing game, right? That playing suicide. It's a big thing. I think, I believe, I think the society, we need to change that um, narrative about men are strong and men should not cry because it starts from a little child. You know, when a boy is little, he gets told, oh, you, I'm, your, a father would say to a son, I'm training you to be a man. So certain things a child does, he's a boy child, 
gets toasted and things, and then it starts from there. So it's not something they just decide to be. It's something that you already trained as a child growing up. And also with your peers, the same thing, like Dr. David was saying. So I think it's more having more conversations, like you're also a human being. You're allowed to feel things. You're allowed to feel the emotion, and you're allowed to cry. Because I think the crying part, you know, it releases. It's cathartic. It, it lets you release the tension if you can't speak to someone but a lot of men don't do any of that so they just bottle in all the emotions and then when it explodes it's just it goes to the extreme side of things yeah so if you've just joined us we are talking about suicide impact and prevention so please click share comment and invite your friends to watch or ask questions and if you or someone you know needs help call lifeline if you're in australia one three one 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 four and if someone is in immediate danger, please call triple zero. That's in Australia. But if you're in any other part of the world, please call the emergency contact number in your country. Yes. Now, as we move forward, what biological factors increase the risk of suicide? Yeah, biological factor. Um, there are several biological factors uh, that increase the risk of suicide. We know. Um, we you know that there are some families that you could say that um, some mental illness run in their family. Let's take um, uh, temperament, excessive temperament. Uh, for example, if someone is known to to have to have a um, mental disorder like hot temper, in, in a family, um, it is actually hereditary. You can you can you can be passed on to your offspring. So that is one of the biological factors that can increase the risk of suicide. What about Dr. Sanika? Uh, Sanika what would you say about that? Yeah, right. it might be genetic hereditary because as Dr. David said, it might be in a family history. Now, child who is thinking of this because might be the child might be stressed, but looking at the parent that the child is stressed, might be the reason what's going on we don't know exactly until and unless we talk with them or we talk with yeah. the individual but yes if the child has seen somebody doing something wrong immediately the individual will also enact the same way so i'm not concerning i am about it that biological factor is as important mm -hmm. but it depends on what individual observe so it can be genetic it can be hereditary it can be family history too well, so it's monkey see, monkey do. Yes. Yes. Very yes. much. <laughs> <laughs> and can the risk of suicide, be, you just mentioned Seb, about inheritance. So can it actually be inherited? Or is that, as you said, it's history. You know, you watch other people doing certain things as a child growing up, and then you think that is actually the normal thing to do. So do you think it could Curiosity. be? Curiosity to know what is this. Come on, let's go and try. Alcoholic. We never tried how to, we never tried what is drink okay and if i don't know what is that drink i would like to probably go and try it so that's what today's youngsters and adults do but they don't know the consequence what is going to happen later right right so talking about alcohol there um dr david did you want to add anything on that can suicide be inherited of course of course um suicide can be inherited there is a growing evidence that Families and genetic factors contribute uh, mainly to the risk of uh, suicide. Major psychiatric disorder, you know, including bipolar, which I mentioned on this show, you know, major depression um, can as well be inherited, you know, which runs in families. It increases the risk, increases the risk um, um, of committing suicide. This does not mean that uh, people that have uh, uh, that when 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 someone is from a family that have this problem, that um, these people will not uh, will not get better. If you, if, you, if you seek help, definitely will get better. It's not because the the history of heritage of this passing through from you to your offspring. I think it can be controlled because if you know you're from a family which have some of these mental issues, it is very very okay for you to have at the back of your mind and always seek help. And always be alert because this thing can actually increase the risk. Just coming from that family, you know, can increase the risk. 
of uh, committing suicide. So to be on the safe side, you always need to seek help, get help. Thank you. It, it, it's unfortunate because you can't choose your family. <laughs> you know, you're born, you're born, that's it. Yeah. Um, and does alcohol and other drug abuse increase the risk of suicide? It does. Okay. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. Alcohol increases the risk, definitely. It does because um, when someone takes alcohol or maybe drugs, a number of recent national surveys, you know, has helped us to uh, shed light on this for us to know that most youth, or let me, let me say people that are of um, the age of drinking age are very prone to suicide from the age of 18 and above. And you see people who are of the drinking age, they are very prone to commit suicide. A survey was carried out and then people who are not, you know, within that age limit, there is the, the, the survey proved that the people with high risk are people that have, you know, um, that are above the drinking age. So definitely alcohol can also increase the risk of suicide. And also um, youth, more likely, most youth are, you know, known to take hard drugs. Definitely, you can see from environment from what is happening in society that most people that commit suicide are the youth. That's why a show like this is coming out for us to, you know, to bring this to the awareness of the youth that, you know, taking excessive drugs, taking drug, abusing drugs or taking alcohol is going, going to only put you at the risk of killing yourself. Right, right. Sanika, what would you like to add to that? Everything almost is covered, but that's what, as uh, alcohol and drug is the dependence on what today individual relies on. If I'm taking this, I'm feeling good. But after once the withdrawal is out, he must be going and come attempting something or might be have attempted. We don't know. So that's what Dr. David has covered the most. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, and apart from talking to a suicidal person and encouraging him or her to go for counseling, what else can we do to prevent this? Yeah, you can help people to access mental health resources. You know, aside from that, show them love. It is, um, it is not no, like I, we have mentioned before, people commit suicide because they believe that their spouse do not love them or they fail in relationship, they commit suicide. So apart from talking about it, show them love practically let the person know that you love them you know get them involved in positive activities directly get them involved in things around that you you know that will allow you to exhibit your you know like mental exercise it helps them to feel that they are useful and also feed them with positive stories always uh, let them know that yes they are important let the person know without telling the person, you, there's a way you can ask for someone to know that, hey, you are very important, even be, without communicating with words, the person will know that, ah, I'm very, so if I commit suicide, I will, I, 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 they will miss me. So that alone, uh, beyond speaking about it, without, without talking about it, the action will help people, you know, to uh, understand that suicide itself is a very dangerous so what kind of actions could you give us an example you know you're saying about act but don't speak so would it be something like just being kind all the time with somebody if but would that be a case where you know somebody suffers from depression so you have to be really sensitive around them is that what you're trying to say be empathetic that's the important thing be empathetic and understand the front person because we don't know what might the person be going through just be with the person there yeah, but I think a lot of people don't know how to do that because, you know, people have their own struggles and they've got their own problems that they've got. So when they meet or maybe in a relationship, you married somebody, you're having relationship struggles for whatever reason. So if you're mentally struggling with yourself, how can you be empathetic about somebody else when you're already in a bad space? What is it? I mean, and again, I think a lot of people don't seek help because they don't even know they have a problem. 
So how does that work? So yes, it, the, this comes mo- majorly in the denial phase when the individual person is going that I'm completely all right. Nothing is happening to me. I don't want to go. But at this particular time, once the bomba boredom comes out in the form of withdrawal symptoms, you should ca- immediately go and consult a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist or a friend who is close to the individual who can understand ki i am going through something something and tr- something is triggering in my mind so at least they could go and talk about it with whom they are comfortable right right because that's the one thing i find a lot of people don't know how to ask for help it's again back to society we've grown up in a way that again when it comes to especially men it's an ego thing even females you don't want people to think you've got problems you're struggling because maybe they're going to talk about you and that is a thing that really stresses a lot of people so what else can we do to prevent suicide apart from trying to talk being empathetic what else can we do well there there, there are so many things we can do to you know prevent suicide so many things we can do um we we can reduce um the access to the means of committing suicide around us you know we can reduce the access uh, you know the access to to guns to firearms especially in countries where uh, people are legalized to carry firearms and some certain medication should not be circulated in society should not be allowed to to be out to the reach of especially young people you know some uh, means in which one can easily use to you know kill themselves another aspect which we can control this uh, serious case is reporting by the media responsive reporting that sometimes some of the some of the report we hear from the media is it that is going to depress you or is going to make you feel how ah, things are going wrong in this world you don't even need to be so media our media have to be cautious about how you're bringing out your news there are some news you bring out to intimidate to destroy mental health so media also can help to control and prevent suicide and we have to make suicide and the knowledge the education of suicide to be available in schools and then we have to make the intervention available for people to easily access that's why i like what we're doing in jimha which is making mental health issues like suicide for people to be aware the awareness is very important creating the awareness for the world to know about it is a means of control in itself the awareness of it and then making people know that yes when someone has uh the suicidal tendency he can he, he can get help can be treated you see it's something that is seriously preventable it can be prevented if the person is encouraged to take help seek help it can be preventable right senator yeah. what did you want to add to that yeah the very first important thing is you can psycho educate the very important thing the more you psycho educate the more awareness is spread in the society second thing you can tell you can ask people for going and getting help from various helplines crisis helpline mental health helpline who are available in the crisis time third thing you can tell them to meditate you can tell them to whatever the thought is coming to your mind just take a book take a pen and just note it down second thing what you can do is you can tell them to go and seek help from a clinical psychologist because certain blockages needs to get cleared when the person is not in the delirium delima form or denial stage person doesn't know what needs to be done so i could encourage please go and talk to a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist or any counselor or a school teacher who can understand you who can talk to you who listen to you yes yes and and why don't people talk about mental illness like depression bipolar disorder or suicide why do we have a stigma about that um most of the reason why uh, people don't want to talk about it um most people don't talk about it because they feel they, they especially those that are involved they are afraid of embarrassment they are afraid that people will shame them when they mention it some believe that they, you know they, they feel they can manage it that's why and 
you know, I want to tell you, there are some society, there are some culture and belief that do not allow people to talk about suicide. So the mention of suicide itself is a taboo in the culture. So they feel they don't want to be stigmatized. They would rather die on the process than them talking to people for people to know. Well, there are society that feel that if you, if you commit suicide, you are, you are a coarse person. You are somebody that is coarse. So talking about it and coming out to share their views, like, ah, this person is having a problem. And also, in some communities too, some societies around the world, uh, if you are admitted in a, in a mental facility, in a psychiatric facility, who start avoiding you. They say you're mad. You know, if I may prefer to use that. They say that there's something wrong. They don't know that, you know, mental health issues, you know, can actually, we can, we can help if we seek help earlier, we can, it can be resolved. Someone can, can get help and can live normally in the society like every other person. So because of the fear that they are having, most of them decide to keep this to themselves. So that's one of the reasons why they do that. True. Um, Sanika, would you like to add something? Yeah, as the stigma and the taboo is there of non-judgmentality, what if the person is going to think about me? Now I've done, but again, I have to face the same person again and again as we have, as we can't go and see corporate people who have been doing this, who go through the mental health problems. So constantly back of their mind is what if this, if I go and talk to this person, this person is going to think like I'm mad, I'm crazy. If I cannot help myself, I cannot help anyone. Well, why is she coming and talking to me? So the stigma and taboo is still there wherever you go. It's in child, it's in school, it's in anywhere in the environment where you're leaving. So it's very important to come, talk about it openly and accept it. Acceptance is a very important key when we talk about mental health. The moment you don't accept, still the stigma is going to be there. So the more you educate, the more the acceptance comes, everything is going to be all right. Nobody will go and think of it, I guess. True, true, true. And uh, what are some prevention and controls we can actually implement, whether from a community level, from a family level, from a government level, from, uh, from everywhere? Psychoeducation to firms, to schools, to organizations, to the employment, yeah. to each and one on one individual, mouth to mouth publicity yeah david did you okay, want to add yeah. um and like i said before most of the reason why um, some of the controls that we should the precautions that we should take you know we have to make sure that we we spread the knowledge of mental health it's good for people to know that um, it's okay for people to have mental health disorder. And that the best, when you, have, when you discover you have a mental illness, you need to seek help, professional help. You need to talk to a professional. If, you, if we know this, if we make the knowledge available for the world to know, we we'll make it easy for when people come across situations like this, that it is not a death sentence, is something that can actually, um, people can be helped to help to prevent suicide even before um, somebody gets involved in it. Thank you. Now, before we conclude, I know there's so many ways to protect and manage your mental health and well being. What is the one thing you do for yourself on a daily basis to check in with your mental health and to suit your soul? Sanika. Self care. And pamper yourself as much as you can. Love yourself. Because you are very important. The life is beautiful. Do not give up. Seek help. We are here for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. David. Yeah. Okay. You know, like she said, life is beautiful. Can be happy. You know, get involved in things that make you happy. You know, try to forget about so many stress. You know, the world is full of so many things. Uh, you can load so many um, bad things on your health. It's going to destroy your mental stability. So get yourself some happiness. Give yourself some love. Share with loved ones. Make yourself available. Get involved in the things you love to do. And um, try to make other people happy. You know, sometimes trying to make someone happy 
is also a way of getting yourself happy. So get involved, like in what we're doing right now, uh, you, you're happy doing it. Katinda, you're happy presenting a show like this. It's doing this. You're also increasing um, your success in your mental uh, control, how you can control your happiness. Yes, because you're doing what, um, your, what is benefiting people and as well, you love doing it. So that is what we should engage ourselves more in doing so yeah, for our maybe- mental stability. Yes, but David and Sanika, you still didn't answer the question for yourself. What do you do for yourself on a daily basis? Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Definitely. Cool. So we meditate, meditate. For me. Okay. All right. For me, yes. What I do when I wake up in the morning, I try as much as possible to put my, my schedule together, my to-do list, and make it very organized. So I don't jump the gun. I do things one after the other so that I will not get myself, I don't normally, so that I won't get unnecessary pressure about things. I'll just do them the way I planned them, you know? So with that, personally, it helps me stay stable. It helps me stay control and be able to face the, the world and do whatever I want to do. So that's how I keep my pants ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Sonika, what about you? Meditate. Uh, have a positive affirmations for yourself, pamper yourself, yeah. sing, dance, have a good music, sing, sing along with the family, spend time with your family. So this is what I do. And yes, organize your list, as Dr. David said. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I always say for me, I do, I've got a routine. And my routine is when I wake up in the morning, you know, usually go to the toilet and then look in the mirror and check in with yourself that you're still here, you're still awake, you're still alive. But it's more yeah. about being grateful for great gratitude. Here. It's yes. the gratitude thing. And then I meditate for about 15 minutes and then I do something physical um, for 30 minutes. But I also write in my gratitude journal. So I just don't say thank you for being alive and thank you to the universe, but I also write five things that I'm grateful for this morning. And then I do the same exercise before I sleep. What are five things I'm grateful for that happened to me today? So I believe gratitude is the only prayer. If if people don't pray, but gratitude is the one prayer that you have to have. Because I find when you're grateful, you can't have negative thoughts at the same time. It's either one or the other. So when you're being grateful for things, and you, obviously you feel it. It's a feeling. It's not just saying it. You feel grateful. It really... Um, balancing it puts you in balance so you're not out of alignment and that somehow for me brings me back in balance so that's my routine and uh before we conclude we have some news flash jim her newsletter will be launched friday 30th of april which is tomorrow um to subscribe to the newsletter in order to get support on mental health and to keep an update with jim her's events and activities please go to Jane has a website, which is www.globalyouthmentalhealthawareness.org. Or if you'd like to, more information about the Global Youth Mental Health Awareness, you can contact Jude at jimhar.org. Or you can also message us on our Facebook page. And you can also connect with us on all social media platforms. We are on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. We have an email as well. And yes, so... Before we go, Sanika and Dr. David, where can people find you? They can find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Right. Is it? Okay, is yeah. That, yes, same, Dr. David? Yeah, my name, um, uh, people can get me on Twitter, David, David PhD, and um, also on Facebook, um, www slash Facebook davidobonacon.com Yes, yeah, so right? some but those details will be on the on on the on the bottom of this Facebook live today. So if you want to get in touch with Sanika and Dr. David, we'll put their details on the bottom of this um, Facebook live. So if you feel free to contact them if you have any any questions, any challenges that you wish to address with someone who is a professional who can support you, help you, and guide you in the right direction. So thank you so much, Dr. David. Thank you so much, Sanika, for sharing your insights on suicide and the impact it has on our families and communities. 
I want to also thank you viewers for being a fabulous audience and thank for watching the Global thank Youth Health Awareness Show. We appreciate you. So on, on the next fortnight, the topic is going to be mental health and well-being in pandemic. And we know, like, for example, at the moment in India, the pandemic has just taken off again. It's really gone out of control. So we'll be talking about how to, you know, take care of yourself, how to monitor and be, you know, in, in a good space mentally, um, especially when we're going through a pandemic. So until next time, may all your experiences and may you all experience the frequencies of love and light. Stay blessed. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Okay.